So here is a topic that's been coming up a lot on the internet. What does feminism really mean? And what does it mean to be or not to be a feminist? A number of people have claimed to debunk popular misconceptions about feminism, or claim that they used to think that feminism meant one thing, and that now they think that it means something else. Or they will just talk about what feminism means to them, or explain why they call themselves a feminist, like we really care. First, I'll just mention that the only person who can legitimately claim to know what feminism really means would be a bona fide feminist. I know that some of you are suspicious anyways, so I might as well just come clean with you, internet. When I was a child, I always knew that there was something very wrong with me. But I couldn't figure out what it was. After my doctor diagnosed me with chronic feminism at the age of 11, I was in shock. I didn't want to believe him. I was so mad at my doctor that I accused him of being a shill for the patriarchy, and I reminded him that he was privileged to make more than a female doctor would. I never could stay on topic, but I was in total denial at first. There was no denying it, though. It took me years to come to terms with and accept my feminism but I still had to keep it hidden from the rest of the world. You see, what non-feminists don't seem to understand is that living with incurable feminism is actually not so hard to deal with, but it's the stigma that comes along with it. That's really traumatizing. That's why I hate it when people make ignorant assumptions about me just because I have feminism. First of all, I want everyone to know that we're not ugly, nor are we narcissists. Also. We don't hate men, and we don't hate logic either. What we really hate is criticism. So, in order to help my fellow feminists, I'm going to set the record straight. You really want to know what feminism is? I'll tell you what feminism is. Feminism is a word. Feminist is a label. Beyond that, though, what can or cannot be said about this ideology? What is the correct definition? What is the correct use of this word? Some people on the internet claim to enjoy calling themselves a feminist. And what they have to say often boils down to, I think that I'm a feminist, and I also think that feminism is good, and I also think that you should agree with me. But beyond listing a few real or imaginary problems that they care about, which feminism is somehow supposed to solve, they won't really talk about exactly how feminism is going to solve these problems or even what feminism really is, beyond vague-sounding clichés. There really isn't much of an agreed-upon definition of feminism. There's no single definitive dictionary definition. However, dictionary definitions tend to include words like equality, freedom, rights, advocacy, and of course women and gender. Real-life feminist activists tend to talk about raising awareness on women's issues or opposing patriarchy. The most common definition for feminism that I've come across is advocating for the social, economic, and political equality for women. If you're a feminist activist, then, this definition would imply that you think that women don't already have equality in some sense. But it doesn't really specify which sense. It doesn't really matter if we all agree that we like the sound of words like equality, fairness, justice, or freedom, so long as we have different ideas about what these words mean, and especially when we have different ways of evaluating whether or not they've been obtained, or of how to go about obtaining them, and also when you have different biases, assumptions, and beliefs. Basically, these definitions are hollow for all intents and purposes, and only serve as PR or propaganda. When you see campaigns which ask people to tell the world why they need feminism, and pretty much any answer will do, then it becomes almost self-evident that feminism has become a joke. It is as though feminism has been reduced to a formless orb of pure desperate need for validation and praise. Feminism is now something that can either be identifiable or not, generalizable or not, powerful or not, depending on whether or not you're praising it. Well, this is what feminism looks like to me. These are the petals of the feminist flower. I will elaborate on it shortly. But first I want to make a few points. 
What about the idea that anti-feminism or being critical of feminism is hate? This is some very frustrating nonsense. This implies that feminists have little to no choice but to identify themselves as feminists, as if they were not able to disown the label. This is just a game, though. This is the power to negotiate that comes from having a binding commitment. Just imagine the following scenario. Let's say that you really want to stop a train. Standing on the tracks is just not going to work, since everyone knows that it would only take a couple of seconds to just jump right out of harm's way. And therefore, whoever controls the train will have to commit to a course of action much sooner than you will. Once the train passes the point of no return, then you will see that the train is clearly not going to stop, and you will obviously choose to jump out of the way, rather than to die for no reason at all. And then the train just goes ahead and nobody gets hurt. However, if you decide to handcuff yourself to the tracks and throw away the key, your firm commitment moves the moral responsibility away from you to the person who has control over the train. The person who controls the train now has to choose between life and death, and is now morally obligated to stop the train. Some people really do have a strong investment and commitment to the word feminism, to the ideology, to the identity, to the brand and the label, and especially to the money and careers that come along with it. But these people are a small minority compared to all the people who just so happen to call themselves feminists, many of whom are just young and naive. Most so-called feminists are just standing on the tracks and playing chicken. They're not really tied down. Feminism is not a group of people. Nobody is born a feminist. Therefore, anti-feminism is not hatred against feminists. Anti-feminism is also not misogyny. Many people assume that feminism represents women, or that it promotes the interests of women as a group, and that therefore anti-feminism is shorthand for anti-female and pro-male, or that pro-feminism is short for anti-male and pro-female. There are also a lot of people in the manosphere, or the anti-feminist world, who actually agree with feminists that feminism benefits women at the expense of men. They just don't agree that it's a justified response to patriarchal oppression. And I also hear them say that women support feminism because they benefit from it. I don't buy the idea that feminism is women's best friend, though. There are a lot of women who think that feminism is their friend because they are a woman, or that feminism is on their side because they are a woman, but that's just because they haven't really given it much thought. There really is no escaping the fact that if something is bad for women in general, then it must also be bad for men in general, and vice versa. You can only really escape this fact if you indulge in a fantasy world where men and women are conceived of as competing tribes, or gangs, or sports teams, competing for power, or status, or survival, or security, or points, or what have you. Another related point that I want to make here is that anytime you say something about men, you're also implying something about women, and vice versa. I bring this up because I came across the following comment on a YouTube video, which featured Christina Hoff Summers arguing with some MSNBC hosts about the boy crisis in education. Quote, This was not about women. Yet that was what the discussion was about. This happens far too often. We're told a discussion about boys and men is going to happen, but the entire time is spent talking about women. It's disgusting. End quote. I can see where that comment is coming from, but I disagree. Seriously, how is it possible for Christina Hoff Summers, or anyone else, to not talk about women? I don't think that the hosts were changing the topic from men to women, they were actually disputing the claim that Christina Hoff Summers was making about women. Because you can't talk about how well males are doing without also talking about how well females are doing. Saying that men are doing relatively poorly is the same as saying that women are doing relatively well. There is no getting around that fact. How do we know that boys are doing poorly? Because we're comparing their achievements with those of girls. So if we say anything meaningful about boys' achievements, then we're also saying something meaningful about girls' achievements, and vice versa. The only problem that I have with focusing on just one gender's problems is when it is done in a misleading fashion. It's the lie by omission that I have a problem with, 
For example, it's misleading to claim that 50% of women are abused by men while ignoring the fact that by the same standard of abuse, 50% of men are also abused by women. You can't solve a problem if you insist on only focusing on half of it. So you can't help one sex without also helping the other, and you can't talk about one sex without also talking about the other. There is no escaping these basic truths. Now, back to my concept of feminism. In my view, modern feminist ideology and activism has three main branches, and this allows for some specialization. Some feminists embrace the whole ideology, while others focus on only a part of it. And that's one reason why I think that some feminists have much more in common with men's rights activists than their label would imply. So over here you have what I'm going to call victimhood feminists. These are the feminists who focus in on violence against women. They claim to advocate on behalf of women who are victims of rape, domestic violence, and sexual harassment. These feminists are more able to get support from social conservatives and from people of all political stripes, and they attract sexists of all types. I would say that this is the most sexist and bigoted branch of feminism, and it is also the least compatible with the men's rights movement. These feminists are heavily invested in the idea that they are saving lives and helping people, so it is more difficult to get them to open their mind. Next, you have what I'm going to call the leadership feminists. These feminists will tend to focus on women in leadership positions in business and in politics. You will hear them talk about equality and the wage gap, the percentage of female CEOs and politicians. They generally want females to be in charge, they want them to have more power and a higher status, but they don't necessarily know what is keeping them out of these positions. They also focus on the elites and they ignore the masses. They get almost all of their support from statists and from the political left, and they value equality of outcome over personal freedom. And finally, you have what I'm going to call the gender feminists. Not to be confused with Christina Hoff Sommer's concept of gender feminism, though. These feminists talk a lot about personal freedom, abortion rights, gay rights, sexuality, gender identity, freedom from gender roles, masculinity and femininity, androgyny, transphobia, pansexuality, beauty standards, consumerism, stereotypes, role models, the mass media, and they tend to call themselves third-wave feminists. The young millennial feminists tend to belong to this cluster, and I think that these feminists are the most compatible with the men's rights movement. This is where you can find people who largely agree with us and share the same values, but who are generally distracted and misinformed and will focus on trivial aspects of pop culture and the media. They will also tend to think that we misrepresent feminism or their feminism and mistake them as our enemies when they're really our allies. And I think it's much easier to find common ground with these feminists. And then at the core you have your generic all-purpose feminists who see how all of these branches stem from patriarchy theory and how they're all aimed at dismantling patriarchy and empowering women. For any MRAs who want to convince or convert feminists, I think that it would be a good idea to figure out where your counterpart is on this feminist flower, in order to decide on the most effective approach.